Yes. Um, in light of the overreaching of the federal government that's going on, how important do you think the um, the state's exertion of their Ninth and Tenth Tenth Amendment rights are or will be going forward? Because that's something that people are starting to talk about here in Rhode Island. Yeah, it, the, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, um, the, uh, what was it, um, one, two, three, four, Seven, Bill Clinton listing the Ten Commandments, and <laughs> one, five, eight is Bill Clinton reading the Bill of Rights. Um, the, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, along with the Second Amendment, tend to get dropped out when uh, uh, some of our friends on the left list the Bill of Rights. Uh, and of course, we've moved away from uh, the idea that there are certain things the federal government ought not to do. They belong to the people and, the, and or the states. Uh, but again, I'm on the board of the NRA. We have our Second Amendment rights because of the NRA, not because of the Second Amendment. Okay? We fought those state by state, city by city, vote by vote in Congress, and with or without the Second Amendment, that's why we... They could have taken away our Second Amendment rights while the Second Amendment just sat there. Because constitutions are really nice and useful things, but if they just sit there, um, and given the courts that we've had, they were not going to do anything for us. Warren Berger gave a speech about how the Second Amendment doesn't mean anything. He was the conservative on the court. Um, we protected our rights. Now, the Constitution is a nice list of our rights, that's useful, but if we don't fight for them, and if we don't do the work, and if we don't elect people, who, and elect people who pick judges, um, they will just take that all away. So I'm all for reestablishing our Ninth and Tenth Amendment rights vis-a-vis -vis the federal government, but it's going to be a political fight. You cannot go to the courts and say, hey, would you do my work for me? No. Because th th that's not, these are political fights. Now eventually, hopefully ten years from now, we'll be able to go, that violates the Tenth Amendment, go away. The, what we can now do with the Second Amendment, because the courts made a decision, but the Second Amendment without the NRA behind it would be a weak read. And so what the people can do is get behind the people that we elect, basically. I mean, from our, from our standpoint as... And make it clear that that's one of the issues that you vote on, and this is one of the things you want people to do. You, you need to explain to elected officials, this is why you got elected, going a different direction could get you unelected, and doing it this way makes it possible for you to get elected in the future and promoted more. You need to explain to people, this is politically healthy for you. This is good for you. Like your parents are always telling you about weird foods and stuff. Okay. At first, you go, I don't know about this stuff. Uh, so it takes a long time to convince people that it's safe and it's healthy and it's good for them. Um, and that's why 50 states are good, because when you see it working in other states, then politicians go, oh, I could do that. Um, what would the politicians on the other side, what would be the objection to it? The Ninth and Tenth Amendment? Yeah. Like, get, it gets in the way of me telling everybody what to do. Gets in the way of my power. And I have, I want power to do interesting things. Okay, but if you're running for something, you don't say that. So what do you say? If you're I have donors and activists and voters who want me to go push other people around. And your Ninth and Tenth Amendment would get in the way. I, I mean, I'm not sure they quite say it that way. Yeah. Um, they don't say it that way with the First or Second Amendment, which they also find tiresome. Uh, but anybody, yeah, look. People in this room, the work you do, the exoskeleton for politicians, that's critically important. And I just I just think we can't, every once in a while somebody goes, did you notice that in the Constitution they, they forgot to ratify the 16th Amendment? You know, I don't think the Supreme Court's gonna solve my problem for me. I'm gonna have to go fight this day after day in Congress. It, it, you, you may be right, you may absolutely be right, but the court's not gonna do it for you. And you can't throw the 10th Amendment at somebody who's violating the Tenth Amendment and have it stop them. It doesn't do it yet. It's, it's take a long time. It's gonna take a long time to get guys elected who appoint judges who would then recognize that. But it's worth the effort. We'll win. Look at we're winning. We're not losing. They really took us for a hit last year. And we're moving in the right direction, and they said we were finished, and we are not finished. I got emails today. People see Scott Rasmussen's uh, polling data each day. Um, the Republicans, um, are do you want to elect a Republican Congress or Democrat Congress? The Republicans continue to be strongly ahead. 
Um, people extremely opposed to Obama, eight points more than people extremely for him. And the, the numbers are holding people by 10 points who don't want the government run health care approach. These numbers are moving in the right direction. They're holding. Oh, and I, I left off the other thing to keep an eye on, the November elections in Virginia and New Jersey. Uh, right now we're eight points up against Corzine in New Jersey and up about 12 to 15 points in Virginia. Uh, when the Republicans won the governorship in 93 in Virginia and in uh, New Jersey, after that point, half of all the Republicans who won the Congress in 94 decided to run. Okay. They hadn't decided to run when they saw how well the Republicans did in those two governors' race, a whole bunch of guys who've been thinking about it jumped in and said the water looks pretty good. Okay, We've got a good collection of candidates now who watched April and July and August and the polling numbers collapse. And, and remember, if you're a Democratic freshman, you, you were told you had three people protecting you. You had eight foot high Obama and his big popularity. He would come in and save you if you were in trouble. And you're looking back, and he's, 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 he's not eight feet anymore. Remember the Tweety Bird one where Tweety Bird gets to be really big, and then it shrinks again? Okay. Tweety Bird shrinking, OK? And, and not the big, fearsome uh, character. We all watch Tom and Jerry as kids. Um, so Obama's popularity is just, it has, has dwindled to where it's not frightening to other people. If Obama doesn't like you, that's one guy who doesn't like me. It's not the guy who comes into the district and tells everybody that, you know, and puts me in trouble. The other one was the 13 million emails and Facebook people that the left had. Remember, remember this? The other team has jillions of emails and they use Facebook and other cool thing and Twitter and stuff. And, and our team forgets to do this. That was further, that was, it was never true. They never had more political emails than we did. Um, but Obama had all those emails, whereas at our team, the RNC had them. I'd much rather have our party own the emails than a candidate. And so Obama had 10 million emails, the RNC had 10 million emails, and DNC has 3 million emails, and McCain had 3 million emails. We're about even. But people believed that there was this huge political power in these email contact lists that he had. When he unleashed them for support of the stimulus package, he got 100,000 emails. Which means either they don't really have 13 million emails, or they have them, but they said, I signed up because it was cool and everybody thought it would be nice to get an email from the Obama campaign, but I don't open them, I don't read them, I don't respond to them. They don't move me to, pop, to political action, which is just as bad as if they didn't exist in the first place. So all of a sudden this, this oh, and then the labor unions were going to be able to put X number of people in any given place to push people around, and when August was going on, we're still waiting for the rally where they outnumbered us. We had volunteers, they had the paid guys on the purple t-shirts, okay? And we outnumbered them every place we went. And often by many, many numbers. So the, the big fearsome support that the other team had, the reason our guys were supposed to be scared and their guys were supposed to feel comfortable because they had Igor standing behind them and who would hurt people, if, if, it's not there. And they're a little more alone than they used to be. Well, we had lots of those in Rhode Island, but we're louder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly.